Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. And today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The case of Yvonne Baldelli, a hellish love story on a heavenly island. Sometimes the search for paradise on earth can lead one straight into a real-life hell from which escape is impossible. However, it's only fair to note that a significant factor in this journey is who accompanies you in search of this paradise. Choosing a companion should always be done with the utmost care and caution. Yet sometimes, even the person who seems closest and dearest can turn into a true, merciless monster. The tale of Yvonne Baldelli and Brian Brimager began like something out of a fairy tale. Yvonne thought she had found true love, for which she was ready to run to the ends of the earth. However, from the very beginning, her relationship raised concerns among Yvonne's family, who disapproved of her partner. Unfortunately, the family's worries were not unfounded. This complex case started in 2011, when a happy and in-love Yvonne left with her beloved for a tropical island. As it turned out, she was heading straight towards her own demise. Only several years later, disfigured fragments of her body were discovered in a swamp, bagged alongside the remains of her cherished pets. Yvonne's family exerted considerable effort to achieve justice, efforts that cost another family member their life. Who was Yvonne Baldelli? Yvonne Olivia Baldelli, née Fold, was born on June 30, 1969, in a small town in the southern part of sunny California. She was the third and youngest child of Marjorie and James Fold, growing up alongside her older brother Michael and sister Michelle, with whom she shared a particularly close bond from childhood. When Yvonne was 13, her mother passed away after a long illness. A year later, her father remarried to Lillian Faust, and the grown children developed wonderful relationships with their stepmother, a kind and caring woman who loved her husband's children as her own. Yvonne received a solid education and explored several career paths, but her main passion was always fashion design, and she dreamed of turning her hobby into a profitable business. However, luck never seemed to be on her side when it came to her personal life. She was married twice, but both marriages ended in separation. Additionally, a surgery she underwent in her youth, followed by complications, left Yvonne unable to have children. After divorcing her second husband, Kevin Baldelli, in 2007, Yvonne lived alone in her small apartment with her beloved dog, whom she affectionately called her child. She remained in constant contact with her father and sister, calling them almost daily and making an effort to see her family at least once a month. Meeting Brian and the Love Triangle In 2009, as Yvonne was preparing to celebrate her 40th birthday, she met a Marine named Brian Brimager. At that time, he was legally married and raising a young son with his wife. Despite this, Brian was open to having an affair and shared with his mistress how unhappy he was in his marriage claiming he hadn't filed for divorce solely because of his child, whom he didn't want to distress. Baldelli fell for this fit, tanned, handsome man at first sight and believed every word he said. Having experienced the pain of a loveless marriage herself and knowing how hard it can be to leave such a relationship, she didn't rush her partner, believing that the presence of a child was indeed the main obstacle. However, Brian wasn't as straightforward and sincere as he appeared. From a young age, his attractive looks had made him very popular with the opposite sex. He was accustomed to juggling multiple relationships simultaneously and expertly deceived the women who fell for him, promising each one marriage, a family, and eternal love. It soon came to light that the married Brimager was not only seeing Yvonne, but also had another mistress. This other woman was Christine Verhoeven, a stunning blonde with extensive connections. She was an analyst at the White House and had made a remarkable career during George W. Bush Jr.'s administration. When Yvonne discovered the existence of another rival, she decided to confront the issue head-on and was ready to fight for the man she loved. Gathering her courage, she called her lover's wife to inform her that Brian was cheating on her with not just one, but two women. This revelation sparked a major scandal, forcing Brian to make a difficult choice. Eventually, he chose Yvonne, though it's possible she pressured him into making this decision. A 
A few months later, Brian officially divorced his wife and moved in with his new love interest. At that time, he was still serving in the Marines, but had been contemplating ending his military career for a while. The couple seemed genuinely happy, but Yvonne's relatives remained wary of her new partner, doubting the sincerity of his feelings. Moving to a tropical paradise. In the summer of 2011, Brian began to talk about radically changing his life, leaving the service, moving away from the bustling city, and settling down on a tropical island. Yvonne shared his sentiments, supported him in everything, and was ready to follow him wherever and whenever he decided. She believed she had met the most important man in her life and adored him. By September of the same year, the decision was final. The couple chose to move to Panama and settle on the small island of Caranero, a place that could truly be called a paradise. Yvonne informed her family just before leaving, so they had no chance to persuade her to reconsider. Yvonne sold her apartment, quit her job, and started packing for the journey. She took only a few bikinis, shorts, tank tops, and her sewing machine, hoping to fulfill her dream of opening a small boutique to create and sell custom outfits to tourists on the new island. In early September, Brian, Yvonne, and her beloved little dog flew to Panama. They spent a couple of days in the country's capital before taking a ferry to Caranero Island, where they rented a house right on the oceanfront. The climate was hot and humid with little temperature variation, attracting a steady flow of tourists throughout the year, primarily diving and surfing enthusiasts. The island was just one square kilometer, so one could leisurely walk around it in about an hour. All the infrastructure was located along the coast, while the interior was dense jungle and swampy areas teeming with venomous snakes, spiders, and other wildlife, making it unsafe to venture into. Brian, who had been an excellent guitar player since his youth, brought his instrument with the intention of starting a musical career on the island, performing in entertainment venues. Within a week after moving, he had made connections with several local bar owners, and one of them happily offered him a job. He played in the evenings, entertaining the crowd, but his appreciative audience often bought him drinks as a compliment, leading him to drink heavily almost daily. Yvonne's business also developed very slowly, with weak sales and virtually no profit. However, she didn't lose heart. She started working at one of the bars and even adopted a second dog she found on the island and decided to keep. She communicated with her sister, Michelle Valenzuela, almost daily, sharing everything. But her messages became increasingly shorter and more somber, which worried her family. The first few months on the island seemed like paradise to the couple. Yvonne hoped that Brian would propose, and they would have a romantic wedding ceremony on the ocean shore. But time passed, Brian didn't rush into marriage, and their relationship rapidly deteriorated. The mysterious disappearance. In early December, Michelle stopped receiving messages from Yvonne, which raised her concerns significantly. Then, on December 14, 2011, Brian unexpectedly called Michelle, inquiring when he could stop by to pick up his SUV, which he had left in her garage before heading to Panama. This call and question caught Michelle off guard. It meant Brian had returned to the U.S. and wanted to retrieve his vehicle. But where was Yvonne? Why hadn't she come back or even called? In response, Brian claimed he had explained everything in an email sent a few days earlier. He also mentioned that his now ex-girlfriend had supposedly sent her a message explaining the situation. Michelle checked her messages but found nothing, so she turned to her email. Indeed, there were two unread messages, one from her sister and one from her boyfriend. In his message, Brian stated that Yvonne had left him, running off with a new lover to Costa Rica. The other message, supposedly from Yvonne, claimed she had left Brian upon discovering his infidelity and learning that another woman had given birth to his child. It concluded with her saying she had met another man and gone to Costa Rica with him. The other woman turned out to be Brian's old friend, Christine Verhoeven, with whom he had been involved all along and who was pregnant with his child when he and Yvonne flew to Panama. At first glance, everything seemed plausible and logical, especially since Yvonne couldn't have children. The news that her partner had fathered a child with someone else 
could have been devastating for her. However, Yvonne wasn't known for impulsive actions, and she would have certainly called her sister to discuss such significant changes in her life. Moreover, the tone of the supposed message from Yvonne was somewhat odd and unlike her previous communications, which raised further suspicions. When Michelle tried to determine her sister's current whereabouts, she couldn't get any concrete information. Calls went unanswered, and the messages that came through were brief and detached, saying things like, I'm okay. I need some time. I'm not ready to talk about this. Michelle suggested that Brian should join her in filing a missing persons report. Brian appeared nervous but insisted it wasn't necessary, claiming Yvonne was fine, capable of taking care of herself, and would decide when to come home on her own. Despite Brian's reluctance even to discuss the matter and his hasty departure after picking up his vehicle, a message from Yvonne's phone soon arrived, stating she planned to return home in January for their father's birthday. This message provided Michelle with some relief, and she decided to wait a few more weeks, hoping Yvonne would return as indicated in the message. Search Efforts and Surprising Discoveries by mid-January, not only had Yvonne not returned home, but she also hadn't called even once during that time, and her messages had completely stopped. Moreover, Michelle was shocked to learn that Brian had gotten married to the mother of his child, Christine Verhoeven, right before the new year, which seemed very odd since he had parted ways with his former girlfriend just a few weeks before the celebration. Concerned, Michelle finally went to the police and reported her sister missing, suspecting that Yvonne had not gone to Costa Rica. An official inquiry sent to Panama confirmed her fears. It was definitively established that Yvonne Baldelli had not left the country. Valenzuela then turned to her cousin, a programmer, to help trace the IP address from which Yvonne's messages were sent, determining their actual origin. It turned out the emails, supposedly sent by Yvonne from Costa Rica in December, were actually sent from Dana Point, California, where Brian was located. The same IP address was used for an email sent by Brian himself. With the situation becoming increasingly alarming, Michelle hurriedly informed the police about her discovery. Valenzuela reached out to the FBI and the State Department, sharing her suspicions that Brian had harmed her sister in Panama, and then continued to send messages from her phone and email, pretending to be her for about a month. However, there was not enough solid evidence at the time to arrest him, so law enforcement could only interview him and continue gathering proof of his guilt. It was revealed that Brian had proposed to Christine while still in Panama with Yvonne. He promised Verhoeven that he would soon return, they would get married, and raise their daughter together. Moreover, Christine was unaware that her child's father had gone to the island with another woman, as he had told her he was there on business. The Family's Own Investigation Two months after the woman's disappearance, her sister and niece personally flew to Panama. There, they sought the expertise of Don Winner, a former U.S. intelligence officer turned investigator specializing in locating missing U.S. citizens. They shared the story of Yvonne's disappearance and the version of events provided by Brian. Winner, after listening to them, immediately expressed concern that the chances of Yvonne being alive were slim. With vast experience in such investigations and leveraging his connections, Winner decided to put pressure on the Panamanian government and publicize the case, turning the disappearance of an American woman into international news. A press conference was also organized with the participation of Yvonne's family members. Later, Yvonne's father, stepmother, brother, and several other relatives and close friends arrived in Panama to join the search and assist the investigation. Together, they went to the tropical island of Carinero, combing it thoroughly, yet they found no trace of Baldelli. Their search efforts were hampered by dense undergrowth and swampy marshes teeming with wildlife. In addition, the family questioned the island's residents about how well they knew Brian and Yvonne and what they could say about them. It turned out that the couple had recently been heavily indulging in alcoholic beverages and were frequently involved in loud disputes, unconcerned about those around them. 
Almost daily, they were seen in bars drinking alcohol and having heated arguments. Furthermore, people began to notice bruises and scratches on Yvonne's face and body. She almost never took off her sunglasses, seemingly to hide the bruises under her eyes. The landlord of the house the couple had rented confirmed that neighbors regularly complained about the noise, screams, and cursing coming from their residents. Simultaneously, FBI agents brought a special team of divers to the island to scour the waters around it for any potential evidence or remains of the missing woman. Unfortunately, these searches too did not yield any success. The prime suspect and the first solid evidence. From the outset, Brian was the prime suspect in the case, but there was nothing concrete to charge him with. He denied any involvement, consistently recounting the same story about his ex-partner running off with another man. It wasn't until September 21st, 2012, that Brimager was finally interrogated, and a search was conducted in his home. At the time, his wife Christine was at work, while Brian was unemployed, staying at home with their child and indulging in his favorite pastime playing golf. Initially, he appeared confident, repeating that Yvonne had left him after finding out about his child with another woman. However, he became visibly nervous when the police mentioned that the last messages sent in Yvonne's name came from his area and expressed interest in examining the laptop found on his table. The seized laptop turned out to belong to Yvonne, with messages sent from it after she supposedly fled. A photo of the missing woman with a bruise under her eye was found on the computer, as well as a screenshot of a conversation from November, where Brian and Christine discussed their ongoing affair and shared daughter, presumably how Baldelli learned about them. Moreover, the laptop's search history from November 26, 2011, contained queries such as how to clean blood and how to remove blood from a mattress. These pieces of evidence were significant, but circumstantial, since neither a body nor a mattress with bloodstains was found. The fact that Brian had been sending messages pretending to be Yvonne didn't definitively prove him guilty. Soon, Don Winner discovered that before leaving Panama, Brimager had sold a machete he owned. In an online conversation with a potential buyer, he joked that he had used the weapon just once to finish off a stripper the joke was macabre, prompting authorities to track down the new owner of the machete and seize the blade for examination, which initially revealed nothing conclusive. The long-awaited arrest. The police overlooked another crucial detail, Yvonne's bank card, which Brian used after her disappearance. To add credibility to his story, before returning to the States, he decided to make a trip to Costa Rica and use the missing woman's card a couple of times, creating the illusion that she had indeed fled to that country. He paid for his tickets in cash and withdrew money from different locations in San Jose, draining the card before discarding it. However, Brimager failed to consider that he was captured on surveillance cameras at the ATMs. It wasn't until July 2013, a year and a half after the woman's disappearance, that her relatives, armed with all the evidence gathered by the police, FBI agents and Don Winner finally managed to secure Brian's arrest. Initially, he was detained on charges of making false statements and obstructing the investigation, as there was nothing more substantial to charge him with at that time. By then, he had become a father for the second time. Christine had given birth to a son just a week before his arrest. Authorities attempted to engage the suspect in a candid conversation offering him a chance to confess to the crime and disclose the location of the body, but Brian consistently denied any wrongdoing. His lawyer also insisted on the absence of a body or direct evidence proving Yvonne's demise and Brian's involvement in it. The Gruesome Discovery in the Swamp Just two months after Brimager's arrest, a significant breakthrough occurred in the case. On the island of Carinero, a worker taking a shortcut wandered into the swampy underbrush and spotted an army backpack barely visible above the water's surface. Driven by curiosity and hoping to find something valuable or useful inside, he looked in the bag, only to recoil in horror at the sight of a human skull staring back at him. 
he immediately reported his find to the police, and responding officers took the backpack for examination. Inside were fragments of a human body, along with the remains of two small dogs. The remains had been chopped up, placed in the bag, and discarded in a location where it was assumed they would never be found. DNA testing confirmed that the human remains belonged to Yvonne, although limbs were missing. Pathologists also determined that she had been brutally beaten before her demise, with a broken nose, cheekbone, and several missing teeth. The demise of the dogs was probably orchestrated to lend credence to the narrative, as it seemed implausible that she would willingly leave behind her cherished pets on the island, suggesting a scenario where they were eliminated and laid to rest alongside their owner. When the chop marks found on the victim's bones were matched with the blade of the machete, there was no doubt. The body had been dismembered using this weapon, as each blade has its own signature, akin to a person's fingerprints. With this evidence, Brian was formally charged with murder, dismemberment, and concealing a crime. The Trial and Verdict In early 2014, Michelle Valenzuela was diagnosed with an advanced stage of aggressive cancer. She had been so consumed by the investigation into her sister's case that she neglected her deteriorating health, postponing visits to the doctor. After undergoing intensive treatment for about six months and realizing it was in vain, she decided to dedicate the last months of her life to seeking justice for her sister. In September 2014, when doctors told Michelle she had only a few weeks left, she declared that although she was losing her battle with the disease, she would continue to fight for her sister until her last breath. Choosing to make her testimony in front of Brian, she detailed everything she knew and submitted all their correspondence with Yvonne to the court. She meticulously described Brian's actions after her sister's disappearance and then fainted from weakness. Michelle passed away three days later. The prosecution argued that on the evening of November 26th, following another argument with Yvonne, when she discovered Brian's communications with Christine, Brian, in a fit of rage and under the influence of alcohol, assaulted Yvonne and then fatally stabbed her. He then dismembered her body in the bathtub using a machete, also using it to take the live Yvonne's beloved dogs, and placed the remains in his military backpack. The limbs that didn't fit in the bag were dumped in the ocean, dropped off a rocky cliff early in the morning along with the blood-stained mattress. Brian carried the backpack deep into the island and submerged it in a swamp. For the next few weeks, he continued living in the same coastal house, meticulously erasing any evidence of the crime. He told everyone on the island a story about his flighty girlfriend leaving him for a new lover, a story that sounded convincing enough that locals sympathized with Brian, and he even managed to find a new girlfriend, Nicole Powell, who comforted him for a few weeks until his departure to the U.S. However, at the trial, Nicole testified against Brian, accusing him of lying and cruelty. Faced with irrefutable evidence, Brian was forced to admit his guilt, but insisted that it was self-defense, claiming Yvonne had first attacked him with a knife, which he then used against her. He claimed all subsequent actions were carried out in a state of shock, asserting he didn't remember dismembering and packing the body, taking the lives of the dogs and so forth. However, his internet searches and attempts to eliminate evidence spoke to his full awareness and attempts to fabricate a story to justify Yvonne's absence. In the spring of 2016, Brian was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to only 26 years in prison with the possibility of parole in 2035. His service in the Marines was considered during sentencing, allowing him to avoid a life sentence. Lastly, Brian's wife, Christine Verhoeven, stated she still believed in her husband's innocence and would support him no matter what. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead of you.